Canada Broadcasting Company is pleased to present the first round of the 115th Annual Eastern Counties Cup Competition. Featuring, featuring defendant champions, Bailey's Bay and Challengers, Cleveland County at Seabreeze Oval, Bailey's Bay. Join the island's leading cricket commentary team of Alan Richardson, Wendell Smith and Dwayne Sluggo Levrock with live ball-by-ball coverage. Saturday, July 21st, starting at 10 a.m. on Power 95 FM, the island's number one station for your Eastern County Cup competition. Brought to you by, brought to you by Lindo's Group of Companies, John Barrett and Son Limited, Polaris Holdings, and Money Shop. You're watching Bermuda Tonight is Monday, July 16th, 2018. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. Did the Parliamentary Registry Office act unfairly by giving the Progressive Labor Party access to voters' contact details in the lead-up to the 2017 general election? That question was posed today during a One Bermuda Alliance press conference in which party officials demanded the Parliamentary Registrar publish an internal report into the allegations. As Shirai Trot tells us, the OBA believes that PLP had an unfair election advantage. That I would like to see there to be an even playing field. The opposition OBA says the PLP had improper access to the private and confidential contact information of registered voters over a five-year period allegedly supplied by the Parliamentary Registry Office. That I come before you today, the people of Bermuda, with a very heavy heart to raise some very serious and grave concerns. Leading the charge on behalf of the opposition during a news conference was opposition MP Patricia Gordon Pamplin, who was interim party leader in the aftermath of the OBA's 2017 election loss. The One Bermuda Alliance points to a report in the Royal Gazette in which the parliamentary registrar appeared to confirm that voter information was given to the PLP, whose leader and now Premier David Burt allegedly admitted to receiving by the parliamentary registrar in a report to the Gazette which said, and I quote, I have now been able to ascertain that the information was requested and approved in 2012 by the then parliamentary registrar. File transfer of the information was still in effect beyond 2012, she added. It is our belief that the PLP obtained the private and confidential contact in, uh, details, email addresses, and phone numbers of voters via access from the Parliamentary Registrar's office, which the then opposition leader David Burt has already admitted in July last year. In a pre-election 2017 interview at Alaska Hall, Opposition leader Burt was asked a question about an investigation into unsolicited emails being sent to voters by their party, the PLP. He said, I can only refer you to the statement we made when we were contacted by your newspaper on Thursday or Friday on that matter. The OBA says the PLP was able to use this information, which was not offered to them, to their advantage. Using this singular access, the PLP was able to aggressively target voters. We discovered this impropriety in the run-up to the 2017 general election. Our candidates were contacted by numerous voters complaining that they were being contacted by the PLP via calls to their private telephones and emails and to their private addresses. Asked by Bermuda Broadcasting News if it was the OBA's view that the supposed transmission of voter contact data to the PLP ended up costing the OBA votes in the 2017 election. What I'm saying is that democracy has not been protected. What I'm saying is that during the 2017 election, there was the ability of one party to be able to contact voters that was not given to the other party. Clearly, the uh, election was won by the PLP because more people voted for the PLP. But we are more concerned about the protection of democracy and not about the results of the election. 
And we reached out to the PLP for its reaction to the OBA comments, but so far we've had no reply. It started out as a dig against the OBA and use of consultants, but did government MP Neville Tyrrell go too far? Michael Dunkley thinks so. In berating the OBA, Mr. Tyrrell suggested the party had wasted its money and ended up losing the 2017 election anyway, in part because of the now infamous pepper spray incident outside Parliament. The trouble is Mr. Tyrrell sits on the committee charged with investigating that very incident, and by using it to criticize the OBA, he compromised his neutrality. Mr. Dunkley claims the PLP statement attributed to Mr. Tyrrell reads, quote, the OBA spent millions of dollars on their failed attempt to retain the government after four years of anti-Bermudian policies and pepper spraying senior citizens. That some of this funding was spent on consultants should not be surprising to anyone. The lesson to be taken from this by the OBA is that millions of dollars and pricey consultants don't connect you with the people, nor does it conceal four years of anti-Bermudian policies and the pepper spraying of seniors, end quote. Mr. Dunkley took issue with the comments at the end of Friday's sitting of the lower house. I rose tonight because here, Mr. Speaker, earlier today, uh, sorry, Mr. Acting Speaker, when the Speaker was in the chair before he went away, he announced an extension to the Joint Select Committee that looks into December 2nd. Now, Mr. Speaker, I have purposely said very little about that committee because that work is something that this House has to conduct in the most appropriate fashion. But these comments tonight, Mr. Acting Speaker, can prejudice the work that the committee do, especially when he talks about pepper spraying our seniors, because of the incident well, happened think, during December 7th. I don't remember. I think we've got to be careful there, because that's a committee out, and I don't think we should go down there. I understand what you're trying to say, but I don't think we should go there. And I agree with you, yeah. Mr. Acting Speaker. That's why I raised it, because an honorable member of this chamber went there publicly with comments. And I think they're inappropriate. I think they should be retracted, or they will bias the, they could bias the committee in work well, that they have. Well, what you can do, you can write to the Speaker. But it's not one that we should discuss tonight. But, you know, as again, you can write to the Speaker. I'd be happy to bring up my concerns to the Speaker, but I think it's mm -hmm. appropriate to bring my concerns to this Honorable House. And we'll have more for you after this short break, including the banning of a Cuban national from the island forever, plus all the latest weather news from AccuWeather. Stay with us. attended the Mira Super Camp. It was an awesome experience. I got to meet a lot of new people. And then we also learned about the eight keys of excellence. Keys over doors, keys, keys over doors. Super Camp is not like other camps. There's a strong focus here about looking at the options and the choices you have available to you and choosing the one that best reflects who you are. I learned a lot about the way that I have to keep pushing and pressing for no matter what's going on. The best thing about Super Camp, it allows you the space to truly be yourself. Anytime somebody finally came into their own presence and felt comfortable being who they were, that was a special moment for me at Super Camp. Super Camp is about exploring who you are and transforming yourself. It only gets better. We invite you to join the transformation of a generation. Police have named an 18-year-old girl who died in a traffic accident in the early hours of Sunday morning. She's Janaya Simmons, the seventh road traffic fatality victim of 2018. It's thought she lost control of her motorbike as she drove along North Shore Road in Hamilton Parish. Janaya was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance where she was later pronounced dead. Police are appealing for witnesses, asking them to contact PC Wesley Watson on 295-0011. And all at Bermuda Broadcasting would like to extend their sincerest concerns condolences to the family and friends of the deceased. In other news, a Cuban national has been banned from ever entering Bermuda after he transited here on his way to Canada. Canadian immigration denied him entry because of alleged criminal behavior, forcing his return to the island, but only briefly. Gary Moreno broke the story and tells us more in this report. Questions remain unanswered as to just how the Cuban national, identified by the Department of Immigration as Ruben Yarzagaray, first arrived in Bermuda on July 9th using what we're told was a Venezuelan passport. 
In fact, the Immigration Department says he was landed in the normal manner and departed Bermuda for Canada on July 12th, where, upon his arrival, he was refused entry by the Canadian officials. The reason, we're told, is that in his application for a Canadian electronic travel authorization, he failed to report criminal activity. However, there has been no indication as to what that criminal activity might have been. Local authorities tell us prior to his visit to Bermuda on July 9th, the Cuban national had nothing on his person which would have alerted airport officers of his criminal activity. It remains unclear as to how the Canadian authorities were able to determine his involvement in such activity. They would tell us only that the Canada Border Services Agency does not speak to the specifics of any one case or confirms or denies the entry of individuals into Canada due to privacy laws. As we reported previously, Mr. Yarzagare was returned to Bermuda on July 13th, but Bermuda immigration officials refused him entry and immediately arranged for his departure on British Airways to London Gatwick and then on to Cuba. It is understood he paid for the airline ticket himself. The Department of Immigration has confirmed that he departed Bermuda on British Airways on July 13th and due to his criminal activity and his admittance of that to the Canadian officials, he will be placed on the Bermuda stop list. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thank you, Gary. Well, a mostly sunny day today as the week gets underway. Here's a forecast for the next few days from AccuWeather. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast here on ZBM is brought to us by the fine folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. And we have a great night, beautiful night out there tonight. The stars should be out. I've been a couple of showers away from the island for the most part, off in the distance. You've been able to, in some parts of the island, see a few of those little rain shafts, little stripes of rainfall from a shower or two out off in the distance over the water. But really, we are in a pretty good spot. There's a small area of higher pressure in the atmosphere that's kind of carving away most of the clouds and paving the way for a nice, quiet night for us here. So it's a good time to be in Bermuda. As we look at the current conditions, we're at 80 degrees right now. We have humidity at 65 to 70 percent. Winds light from the northwest at 5 to 10 knots right now and the water temps holding at around 82 degrees. Uh, on the inside, waves are all the way down around a foot, so it is pretty quiet. Great boating weather. On the outside, we have two to four foot waves at this point. So the upcoming tide forecast or uh, schedule, I should say, uh, features, uh, again, low tide at 612, but the tide will be coming back in later on tonight at around 1223 a.m. High tide. Tide heads back out just before 7 a.m. Tuesday, and then it rolls back into the early afternoon. So we look good out there. We're going to go partly cloudy. You will see some stars out there, 75 degrees tonight. Uh, and on uh, our Tuesday forecast, it gets a little more active with a few showers in a few spots, maybe even a rumble of thunder in the afternoon. So things will become more active, and I'll show you future casts in just a moment that does show an increase in shower and thunderstorm action from the west. We'll be back up around 83. So here's our little high-pressure system with the clockwise flow. It's not big, but it's out there, and it is preventing us from seeing any trouble during our overnight forecast. As we turn the clock forward through the overnight, uh, it begins to push a little farther east, and then we'll begin to see moisture increase from the west, and uh, that will be uh, giving us an opportunity for some hit or miss showers and storms. As high pressure slips away, We'll be dealing with the increasing chance for a little more wet weather. So the gateway forecast shows scattered thunderstorms up and down parts of eastern North America, especially from New York and Boston down into New York City uh, sp south. They could be especially gusty storms. Uh, and uh, there's even a chance for some severe storms into New England as well uh, on uh, our Tuesday afternoon. Toronto's far enough northwest that any showers will be early and limited. So the afternoon hours on Tuesday look good in Toronto. Uh, Atlanta, Miami, a little bit uh, more unsafe settled there, 90 degrees, scattered storms, and in London, look out for a thunderstorm there, 76 degrees. And into the Caribbean we go with scattered thunderstorms, but the good news here is that we do not have any tropical threats right now. Uh, we had uh, subtropical storm Burl regenerate itself off to our north over the weekend. That storm is history at this hour. So scattered showers and storms possible Tuesday, a better chance on Wednesday. That's when that moisture does roll in from the west, a good chance for some rain. We'll go drier, but somewhat cloudy at times Thursday and Friday, then showers return for Saturday. We're going to send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. I was diagnosed with uh, illness. Very frightening because my son had just turned one and it was a cancer. So I'm young, new baby, and I needed to get the care that I knew would be 
definitive to that I wanted to be around for him for a very long time. I got in contact with BFNM and BFNM was able to commit at that time to doing at least 50% so we were comfortable, okay, well we're gonna go. Uh, we got off the plane actually the day of the procedure and on my way to the limo, my case manager called and she says, Kiana, we got it, you're covered at 100%. And I cried all the way to the office because I was just so happy. The BFNM difference is that I really felt that the case manager really was concerned about my overall care and because of that I really appreciated them. I think that personal care, that willingness to listen and then to work until they were able to get it so that I could get full coverage really made the difference for me. I just got the best night's sleep on this beauty rest mattress. This is cause for celebration. <laughs> At Dreams, we don't just sell mattresses so you can get better sleep. We do it so you can be awake. Dreams, the mattress professionals. Bermuda, join us at the Snorkel Park Beach and Bermuda's favorite old school DJs for a fun night of dancing under the stars to the best of old school R&B, house, soul, reggae, soca, calypso, pop, hip hop, and more. It's Sonic Gold Saturdays. The grown up party, the big people party, dressed smart and sexy with a spectacular DJ lineup. It's Mikey B, Malcolm Lethal Weapon Smith, DJ Iceman, Mark. Juggling Jason and yours truly, the Matrix Ninja Cutty. I will be there with special live performances by Reggae Sensation Mox. Cake open 8 p.m. Admission is free before 10. $10 after. So get there early. Snorkel Park Beach, Solid Gold Saturdays. DJ lineup for July the 21st. Juggling J, Mikey B, and Iceman. See you there. Welcome back. Narinda Hargan is the new Chief Justice of Bermuda at a brief ceremony today at Government House. He was sworn in by the Governor John Rankin, who said he was confident the new appointee's abilities would serve the Supreme Court well. Justice Hargan, whose law career spans more than three decades, said it was, quote, a great honor and a privilege to take up the role. The appointment has been controversial in some quarters. In April, Premier David Burke called the governor's decision to select Mr. Hargan an affront to the government as it was not consulted on the appointment. Premier Burke said as a result, the government could not support it. And this Wednesday, July the 18th, would have been Nelson Mandela's 100th birthday. The occasion is being marked around the world, including Bermuda. A walk in honor of the anti-apartheid leader will be held on Wednesday evening, starting on Front Street, with a community dialogue event at the Bermuda Library. Hal Davis reports. It's from here, the Cenotaph, that Wednesday's events will begin, with organizers saying the walk is meant to bring to mind Mandela's book, A Long Walk to Freedom. It's really to create connection for people, to bring people together to see that they can actually be a change that they want to see in Bermuda, have conversations about that, and actually take action to really create that happening. So at the number five uh, car park, the grassy area at Harbor Nights, we're going to be having an area where people can sit and discuss things, the truth and reconciliation. People will be there from Curb to have great conversations. I have fought against white domination. And I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society. But while Mandela's long struggle against South Africa's white minority rule and his embrace of racial reconciliation is universally known, what's less well known, even on the island, is Bermuda's role in the struggle. The Lantana Colony Club in Somerset was the venue for top secret negotiations in 1989, even before Mandela's release. Members of the ANC, including future South African leader Tambo Mbeki, took part, discussing what a post-apartheid South Africa would look like with a ruling white minority national party. Further meetings followed in April 1990, coinciding with a summit between British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and George W. Bush of the United States. Glenn Furbler is one of the organizers of Wednesday's event. In 1990, he was one of the leaders of the Bermuda Anti-Apartheid Coalition. 
We were putting pressure on because, as you remember, Thatcher and Bush were not for the comprehensive sanctions that were necessary. And so we were playing our part in Bermuda. We uh, actually had a, a protest uh, or a rally uh, at uh, Union Square. And uh, prior to that, and a few weeks before that, we asked people to drive with the lights on. And um, I would say like 70% of Bermudians did that. And it, was, it sent a message out that, you know, Bermudians support, you know, this change. Those in charge of this week's event want to honour Mandela in a practical way. After the walk from the Cenotaph, there'll be the chance to sign up to pay something forward to give back to the community. There'll also be a session of community dialogue and a chance to sing happy birthday to the former South African leader. But is his example still relevant, almost 25 years after South Africa's first free elections? Deirdre Lee Bean works for the Tuesday Foundation. Our whole ethos is around using your voice to elicit change. And although Nelson Mandela was born 100 years ago, um, I think it still rings very true in the present time that um, people need to be inspired to not only use their voice to elicit change, but also to be open to um, the message of unity. So while this Wednesday's walk is a celebration of the life and achievements of Nelson Mandela, it's also a time, the organisers say, to look forward using his example as an inspiration to build a better future for Bermuda. Howell Davis, Bermuda Broadcasting News. Still to come, World Biz, and we'll have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. I know these for seasickness last week, and they're terrible. That's strange. I know. I put one behind each ear like you're supposed to, and nothing happened. These are tablets. You're meant to take them with water. I got this pump for my asthma. Hasn't changed anything. Show me how you're using it. It's an inhaler. You're meant to breathe it in. Well, this toothpaste, definitely off. It's a hemorrhoid cream. Well, that explains why my gums are shrinking. Bermuda Broadcasting Company is pleased to present the first round of the 115th Annual Eastern Counties Cup Competition. Featuring, featuring defendant champions, Bailey's Bay and Challengers, Cleveland County at Seabreeze Oval, Bailey's Bay. Join the island's leading cricket commentary team of Alan Richardson, Wendell Smith and Dwayne Sluggo Levrock with live ball-by-ball -ball coverage. Saturday, July 21st, starting at 10 a.m. on Power 95 FM. The island's number one station for your Eastern County Cup competition. Brought to you by, brought to you by Lindo's Group of Companies. John Barrett and Son Limited, Polaris Holdings, and Money Shop. Turning to sports now, and after a weekend of high drama, Earl Basin brings us up to speed in today's sports report. Bermuda Broadcast and ZFBCV7 was the focal point yesterday as France won their second World Cup title with a 4 2 win over Croatia. Laura Duffy, in her return to triathlon action after a foot injury, finished 10th in Hamburg with a time of 59-10 on Saturday. Matthew Oliveira finished on the podium of the Junior Tour of Ireland Cycling Championships. On the final stage, which was a circuit race, Oliveira was able to finish fifth. That position saw him finish third overall. Disaster almost struck during the 77.50 kilometer or 58.19 mile race as Oliveira got a flat tire. However, he managed to chase the pack back and clock a time of 1 hour 46 minutes and 59 seconds. Overall, Ricardo Boxem was crowned the champion with a time of 12 hours 40 minutes and 10 seconds Andrew Waldmer was second in 12 hours 40 minutes and 16 seconds and Oliveira was third in a time of 12 hours 40 minutes and 24 seconds Bermuda were crowned the 2018 Caribbean Union of Teachers Track and Field Champions at the 17th Biannual Student Athletic Championships that concluded at the National Sports Center on Saturday. Bermuda finished with 412 points with Barbados second with 384 points and St. Kitts finished third with 244 points. Bermuda Sancho Smith is now the record holder in the under-15 boys 800-meter run where he clocked a time of 2.06.22. Bermuda's Eleanor Richmond is the record holder in the under-15 Girls javelin throw with a top toss of 35.82 meters. 
Bermuda's two-time Paralympian Jessica Lewis competed in the Montreal Quebec Series Provincial Championships. Lewis would storm to victory in the women's 100-meter dash wheelchair race, clocking a time of 17:22. She would finish fourth, competing in the 800-meter with a time of 2:05:97. Daniel Phillips in his fourth and final tournament competing on the Caribbean Junior Tennis Circuit is playing in Santo Domingo. Phillips in the under-14 boys Kotak Regional Qualifier went up against Alejandro Lisa from Dominican Republic. Lisa would win the match in straight sets, six love, six love, thus handing Phillips his first defeat on tour of the Caribbean. In yesterday Premier Division cricket action, the St. George's Cricket Club upset Southampton Rangers at the Southampton Oval by 13 runs. Batting first, St. George's Cricket Club were bowled out for 153. Tamiko Wilson was the top scorer with 32, while Dion Stovell was the pick of the Southampton Rangers bowlers with figures of 9 overs, 3 maidens, 4 for 25. In reply, the Southampton Rangers were bowled out for 140. Gennaro Tucker was their top scorer of 36, while Onias Bascom was the pick of the St. George's Cricket Club bowlers with figures of 9 overs, 2 maidens, 2 for 30. In other matches, Bailey's Bay won by nine wickets over the Somerset Cricket Club. Scores, Somerset Cricket Club all out for 50. Bailey's Bay, 54 for one. St. David's Cricket Club would win by one run over Western Stars. St. David's Cricket Club were bowled out for 107 and bowled Western Stars out for 106. In first division play, Flats won by 36 runs over the Devonshire Recreation Club. Flats were bowled out for 224 and then would bowl Devonshire Recreation Club out for 188. On Saturday, the Western County Cup match between Coda, Southampton Rangers, and Ward Workmans was rained out. Sean Trott finished second in the run through Battersea Park 10K in the UK. Trott was clocked across the line in a time of 35.01. He was 1 minute and 21 seconds behind winner Steve Wally, who was clocked at 33.40. Dale Brinkman and his crew, Tajari Rogers, are the 2018 Commodore's Cup Comet Race winners with action taking place off the Mid-Atlantic Boat Club. In a three-race series, Brinkman and his crew finished with four points after recording two wins and a second-place finish. Reggie Lamb and his Cambridge United teammates continued their strong preseason form with a convincing 4-0 win over Royston Town. Lamb would score twice. The inaugural Corona Corporate League came to an end at the BAA field with Goslins winning the cup final with a 3-2 win over Bermuda Motors. CONCACAF announced the 2018 CONCACAF Girls Under-15 Championships will be held from August 6th through the 13th at the IMG Academy in Florida. The Junior Caribbean Team Squash Championships came to an end in Jamaica. On the final day of competition, the Bermuda boys would finish third after they defeated Trinidad and Tobago 3-2. The Bermuda girls would finish sixth, falling 3-2 to Jamaica. After suffering a heavy 18-3 defeat at the hands of Puerto Rico in their Men's Lacrosse World Cup second match in Israel, Bermuda looked to bounce back but came up just short. Taking on Hungary, Bermuda had the ball with less than a minute left on offense. The game was tied at 6-6, but Hungary's goalkeeper, Johan Yen, got the ball, heaved it the length of the field, and they scored the game winner in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the Bermuda goalkeeper with 16 seconds left to win the game in regulation time. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Thanks, Earl. It was an exciting weekend indeed. And we leave you this evening with some of the best images captured by James Barboza from Friday's local designer show, part of this year's Bermuda Fashion Festival. I'm Diane Brewer. Thank you for joining us. Good night. You are about to witness four months of hard work. Are you guys excited? Ready? <laughs>
gentlemen, Nicola Lucas brings you our personal line.